your special investigators and CPS investigations caseworkers, by putting them in a completely separate accountability and, and hierarchical structure, how do you see these two groups now interacting? What, what is your thought process and, and whose, whose brainchild was, was this idea? That was mine. Now, the reason for that separate, they work, still work very good together. It just gives them a direct control where they need what they need to do. Because at one time, I'm going to say, I'm going to sugarcoat it, they were being misused for what they were supposed to be doing. Now they have their purpose. They need to know what they know what they need to do. What exactly is their yeah. purpose? Their special yeah. investigators are going to be with to those know. case investigators yeah. on the most serious investigations, and also take the lead in any fatalities alongside of law enforcement. And they will also take an active role, a very active role, on child sex trafficking. That is a com huge problem because we know that a lot of these children that age out. That just age out, a majority of them will fall into sex trafficking. And so they're going to play a big role in that. And that's one of the initiatives that we're putting in, we have put in place. Uh, so their role is huge. I have burdened them heavily for this. But they're police officers, and they know they need, they're not gun carrying police officers, they're former police officers. So the special investigators will not have primary duty of investigation initially. They would have to either be called in by a CPS investigations for a P1 case or a sexual abuse case or a trafficking case or a They will case. work in conjunction. Now, they will work in conjunction with that case. But what, what the whole purpose of that is, not trying to demean our case, young caseworkers. They have a, they have a skill set. They can walk in and see things that I can. I can walk in the room. I do scans. I look around because it's just naturally in me to see what's going on. I want to know what my environment's about. They do that too. They, there's things that I see in some case studies that I've read that I know a, a former police officer wouldn't have missed that. But then I understand why they missed it, but it's that keen eye and that training. We have trained them. Last month they all came in for a training because they now have become mentors toward the new case investigators to teach them interviewing, proper interviewing. I'll give you a case in point. I rode with a case investigator early on when I came on and sat with her while she interviewed. And she was extremely good at what she did. She missed so many things in the interview because she had had that extra instruction on how to read people. What are the, what are the responses coming back from that person? Or what are they telling you? And when I taught her those little things, she started picking up on them. So that was an idea at the very beginning with the special investigator. I said, Get in there. Let's get this training for you guys. Most of them already had it. And start teaching these. Mentor them. They'll look up to you, and they really do. Most of these caseworkers really look up to their special investigators. Of the really 179 are currently part of DFPS, how many are being utilized in that new capacity, new role? Right now, as of last week, they're in that new role. And so the, the P1 issue of not, again, the P1 children that have not had any contact by the state or attempt at contact are those special investigators currently being used on this they're being used in that category correct okay thank you